Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Kinexus training team office hours webinar episode 15, aka the Banner Rippy Show. My name is Ryan Rippy. I'm the senior customer enablement manager here at Kinexus, and I am joined, as always, by my partner in crime, solutions engineer Matt Banna. Hey, Rip, did you see I won an Oscar over the weekend? What are you talking about? Best actor, Bohemian Rhapsody. Everyone says I look just like Rami Malek. Didn't you fall off the stage, too? Well, then it definitely wasn't me, sorry. But maybe one day we'll win an award for our webinars. I'm thinking of Nexi at Kinexicon. I like the sound of that, Ben. Oh, me too, me too. So for those of you new to our webinar series, welcome aboard. The way this works is we plan to nerd out here for the next 30 minutes or so on a Kinexus topic that we will share with everyone here in just a bit. The purpose of these webinars is for us to review the hottest topics and latest and greatest features suggested by you, our customers. So before I reveal our topic for today, let's just quickly go over some housekeeping items. No oh, drum rolls, Ben. Not yet. Oh, sorry. Now, the webinar is being recorded, so we will go ahead and send out the slides and recording to everyone after the webinar. Also, if you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to type those into the chat box. We will do our best to answer those in real time, as well as at the very end of the webinar, if there is some time left over. All right, Bannon, now we're oh, going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at our webinar topic for today. Incidents. Incidences is... What is the plural of incidents? Is it incidi? I think it's in incidents with the S. Okay, sounds good. Did you see what I did there? We put the little incidents I icon like over the I. Yeah. Uh, so for today's, today's webinar, we're going to be taking a deeper dive into our incidents add-on module. So specifically what we have on the agenda for today, we are going to start over, uh, start with the why, uh, talk a little bit about the difference between incidents and improvements in Kinexus. And then from there, we're going to dive into the platform. We'll take a look at an example of uh, what is considered an incident user, uh, and then some of the features and functionality uh, that are offered with incidents, such as uh, the nesting component of incidents, the various role permissions that can be set up on incidents. We'll go through that resolution process with incidents, uh, and then we will conclude today's uh, webinar with the reporting section that is specific to incidents in the system. You ready to rock and roll, Banna? Always. All right. Take it away, good sir. So incidents are either safety or product issues that occur during the day-to-day -day operations of your business. Now, whether you're capturing them to do root cause analysis or doing a formal CAPA system as part of your ISO 9000, incidents in Kinexus offer a way to log these events so that they're managed in the same place you'll use to improve the processes to prevent recurrence. Now, capturing incidents in Kinexus provides a, a single source of truth and it helps you get away from transferring incidents from paper to software and from person to person, which can feel a bit like a game of telephone. And then you run the risk of the story changing a little bit every time, we wanna avoid that. This is a great workflow type to utilize the Kinexus mobile app where you can quickly log the incident in real time, get it to whoever's responsible. Now, the forms and processes are completely customizable in Kinexus, so we can preserve how you're currently doing things, but also improve where any gaps in that current process may be. Now, in addition, the notifications track what you need to have eyes on throughout the entire cycle to ensure that nothing slips through the cracks. All right, so when we're talking about improvements versus incidents, we intentionally designed incidents to be very similar to the improvements uh, and projects workflow uh, just to help minimize the learning curve for people familiar with Kinexus. Uh, so you'll notice today that they have the same look and feel, same statuses, same tabs. Uh, you can export your incidents uh, through PDF or Excel. You can transfer them to uh, a new location, notify people of them, copy them, even convert them. Uh, you're also going to be able to filter a list of incidents and that way you can visualize them through any of the view types offered in Kinexus, such as a list or a Kanban view. Uh, and of course, as we'll see at the end of the training today, you can also report on them. So what's the difference? Uh, first off, incidents are inherently private. So we realize that PHI information can potentially be reported in Kinexus as part of logging an incident. And Kinexus is HIPAA compliant, so you can feel safe and secure with inputting such sensitive data into the system, 
uh, and make sure that the proper people uh, are able to actually see those in Kinexus. Uh, second difference is that incidents can only result in change. So for those of you familiar with the improvement workflow, when you're, when you're resolving an improvement in Kinexus, you have the ability to say whether it resulted in change or not. And if you were to choose no, you would have some list of uh, no change reasons is what we refer to them as. So if you were closing out an improvement because it was a duplicate in the system, maybe it was already part of standard, standard operating procedure, uh, rather than deleting items in Kinexus, you would go ahead and move forward with closing out with a no change reason. With incidents, on the other hand, this is not going to be the case. Uh, what we wanna make sure of is that an incident when you are resolving that in the system, it has resulted in some sort of change. Yes. Obviously, so that we're preventing the incident from potentially happening again. Yeah, we don't wanna happen again. All right, Banna, what are we talking about next here? What does it look like? What does it look like though? Once the instance module has been enabled in your Kinexus instance, there are a few important changes you should immediately note, notice in the system. An incidents tab will be added to projects and charts. So similar to the improvements tab, clicking there will open up a list of all incidents which are nested under this project. An incidents permission section will be added to the role configuration screen. A new user status will be made available, an incident user. An incident section will be added to the reports page with several reports compiling data about incidents in the system. And now let's take a look at how Kinexus looks um, with these incidents built in. Okay, so we're gonna start off by taking a look at the incident user, what they are gonna see logging to Kinexus. Banner, you're logging in here as Ian, he's our incident user. Make sure you got the right password. You typed that in, that wasn't me. <laughs> So we're logging in as, as Incident Ian, Ian McGregor. Banner, that's Ewan McGregor. Are you serious? <laughs> Ian McGregor? Aren't you a Star Wars fan? Oh, I my thought it God. That's Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> Incident users can log into the system like a full access or a frontline user, but they can only submit incidents and see incidents that they've submitted uh, or for which there are followers on. So when you log in, you're immediately taken to a list of items rather than a board. They have no left navigation bar. And this means they can't access the boards, the calendar, or the report section. They can only work with their items. They can only be part of an instance team as an author or a follower. And when you submit an incident, you can change the details, you can add files and links on the submission. But once an incident's been submitted, instant users can only add comments. Okay, perfect, Vanna. So you went ahead, you hit create. And so Ian here is able to create an incident in the system. And so let's go ahead and start to fill out uh, some of the required fields that we have here within our form. Yeah, let's go ahead. Staff cut their finger. Perfect. And so you'll notice the next uh, field here that Banna is populating. This is a date time field. Now this is available on any uh, of those uh, workflows that we have in Kinexus if you wanna have it on an improvement or a project, but it was specifically designed uh, for that incident workflow uh, so that you can include not only the time, but the, or excuse me, not only the date, but the exact time that the incident happened at. You're a fast typer, man. Do my best. I use two fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so let's categorize this injury. Okay, uh, perfect. Staff injury, staff cut their finger. Let me so go ahead and, and go ahead submit and that down. incident. Okay, so it looks like now here on the success, success window that Greg has been notified about this. And so if you were to go ahead and click into that now, Banna, you'll be able to see this. Okay, so here is our, this was another incident we were working on. Here's that staff cut their finger that we just submitted. And so as Banna mentioned, uh, from here, we can leave comments, uh, but we won't necessarily be responsible for uh, the next steps on this item. That's gonna be Greg, who we're now gonna log into and assign this out and go through the same workflow. Yeah, and you'll notice that you can't edit any of these fields uh, once it's been submitted. Um, you can't add files or links in the other section. And then even hitting the ellipses, there's a lot less options that you that you have here as an incident user. Makes sense, okay, great. So let's switch gears. We're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna minimize my tab here. And now we're gonna go and log in as Greg, who's gonna be responsible for actually taking the next steps on that incident. 
We don't have our passwords in place here today. So when Greg logs into Kinexus, Greg is actually going to be taken to an incident board that's been set up for him. And so in addition to being able to visualize all of those incidents that Greg is managing, he's going to get that notification now in the system that a new incident has also been logged. And so if I just go to the notifications here, we can see that staff cut their finger that was just submitted. And so I will go ahead and click into that item. And so here I can go ahead and go through that same workflow process in terms of assigning this out, making sort of making any additional changes to the various detail panels that we have here. And we see Ian's still the, the author on Ian's that. Ian's still the, the author. Yeah. We can see he is that incident user in the system. And so again, the incidents kind of breakdown we see here, very similar to what we have uh, with the standard layout of an improvement, right? You have your details, comments, timeline. And if we have questions for Ian, we can always send him a comment and he can come back. And exactly. There's still that open that. communication between Greg, who's going to be responsible for the next steps, and Ian, who is the initial uh, submitter of that incident. And so if, if Greg wanted to go ahead and move forward with this, he could assign this out. He can come in and add additional uh, charts or tasks underneath here if, if it's set up that way. And then the next thing that I want to highlight is once we have actually completed what needs to be done on this incident, we're going to go through that resolution process similar uh, to what we would be doing with an improvement. And so I'm going to come up here to the new status picker, go ahead and resolve this item. And so here on that resolution screen, you'll notice there's typically those two questions of did this result in change? Do we want to review this in the future? That did this result in change is taken away because you don't have the option to say no, right? In this case, there needs to be some sort of change that resulted for us to close out this incident in the system. And so as you can see here, we have uh, a lot of those stock options for those impact types that are used in Kinexus. Uh, I would 100% assume that this is hopefully gonna result in some sort of safety initiative. I, I would hope so. If we've gone in here and, and you know, changed a process or what have you. And then maybe it's also going to you know, save some time in the process as well, where we can come in and add uh, that specific value for our time mm -hmm. savings. And so once we've gone through that resolution process, we'll, of course, be able to complete out. Uh, oh, got to make sure. Don't want to review that in the future. I'm good. Thank you. We'll go ahead and complete this out. We'll send out those proper notifications. And so now we have that completed incident in the system that we can always search for, come back and review the details on that item here. So, Banner, we talked uh, about the, the resolution there. Let's, uh, let's take a look at some of the other um, features, functionality with incidents. Uh, specifically, let's talk a little bit more about the, the nesting component of incidents in the system. Yeah, of course. So, incidents are similar to improvements. Um, it's one way you can think of, of how that workflow might, might work there. Um, you can nest tasks and charts underneath incidents. And incidents can also be nested underneath projects or charts, just like improvements can. So if you think of that hierarchy, projects, improvements, tasks, that incidents will fit in just next to that, that improvement section. So you wouldn't necessarily be able to have a, an improvement that rolled up to an incident. You also wouldn't be able to have an incident within another incident. But you said an incident can roll up to a project, can roll up to a chart. Yes. And could also be broken down into a chart, if that, if that made sense, or, or tasks as well. That's correct. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the, the permissions as well for incidents. So I'm going to go ahead and jump out of this incident here in the system. We're going to come to the admin section here on the bottom of the uh, advanced toolbar here on the left-hand side of the screen. And we're going to jump into the roles under organization here. And so when you're configuring roles in Kinexus, once you have that incidents uh, module turned on, you're going to notice that there's going to be a new section here within the roles for all of those permissions around incidents. Ben, do you would kind of just want to do a, an overview of some of these checkboxes and what those will mean? Yeah, I mean, so if we scroll up to just see the uh, the improvements one as well, you'll see that most of the role permissions here are, are very, very similar um, to the improvement section. Um, so we have our view. So what, what can you view? Can you view incidents or not? Mm -hmm. um, can you view incidents in a new status that have really just been submitted? Mm -hmm. Can you edit incidents? Now, of course, Greg, our user here, is able to do all these things. Um, so that's why he was able to go in and edit them while, while Ian could not. Yeah, so the incident user that we took a look at with Ian would probably not have 
if any of these check boxes yes. um, checked off here. But for Greg, if he's gonna be that person who's responsible for managing those incidents that come through, he's gonna wanna make sure that he has these permissions in the system. Yeah, and he can even request people to work on an incident. So maybe he doesn't know who's the exact one that, that should be the responsible to help resolve this, um, but he can, he can go ask. And so if you were selecting any of these check boxes as well, there is that option to determine if it's going to be uh, incidents across the entire organization. Maybe it's within a specific department in any of those sub departments. Maybe it's just a sub department that you have this permission on, or maybe it's only specifically for those incidents that you've logged in the system that that permission relates to. Yeah, incidents can have sensitive information. So we wanna make sure that not everybody can see everything here. Huh? So make sure we assign those correct permissions with the net, within the network structure. All right. So Ben, I wanna come back. We have quite a bit of time to talk incidents here. So let's, let's kind of just talk through the way that we set up this incident tracker board for Greg. Uh, I know this wasn't on our agenda, but the way that we're looking at this here is when we submitted, when those incidents were coming through, we can see that that lacerated, where, what was the one that we used? I was gonna say, let's uh, open it up that. a little bit, yeah. So, the one that we just completed is ah, there it right is. So here. The, yeah. yeah, the staff cut their finger. So when we went ahead and logged that in, it was tagged with that attribute value of the staff injury safety hazard. So the way that Greg has his board configured here is he's taking a look at the various, uh, looks like types of incidents that could be logged. And so he can manage these, see the status of all of those. Um, and then if we scroll up, it looks like you've also set up uh, some specific reports in here. This incident Pareto, that's an extremely uh, valuable uh, chart type to use specifically for incidents. Yeah, we can see which ones are the most common um, and try and figure out ways that we can mitigate all those risks there. And, and on top of that, it looks like you also have this pie chart to the left here. Yeah, another um, visual breakdown of, of all of those categories. And then all of the, for you've also included this for all of the categories here. It uh, looks like how many of those are in the system and what status they're currently in here as well. So kind of taking uh, all of these cards here at the bottom and putting them into that incident status. Yeah, so, I mean, so we can look at this incident status here and we can say our patient injury is our, our most common type of incident. And we also aren't doing a good job of, of making sure that those are resolved on time. Um, so that would be something that we really need to get ahead of and get better at. Want to run to the red and make sure we take the appropriate action on those yes. items. I love it. So this is a, this is a great example, Banna, of utilizing a specific board in Kinexus. Um, you know, if, if you're doing improvement work and you're also bringing in uh, the, the the incidents to your your workflow, um, you might only have a few people who are going to be responsible for ultimately working on those incidents and managing those incidents. And so setting up a board for them where they can come in here, see these these types of KPIs, visualize the various incidents in the system. And then I know we went ahead and, and um, collapsed the, this location filter on the left-hand side, but this would allow you to start to drill into those various departments to see where those incidents are actually happening as well. Yeah, and I know that this board just talks about the type of incident, um, but some of the other options that we filled out was, was the severity, so whether it was a minor, a moderate, or, or a severe injury, or, or what type of injury it was. Um, and we can categorize those as well and, and build boards to filter by those options. Keep in mind, when we were logging in as Ian, we created a, a very um, generic incident template, similar to the, the various other template types with your projects and improvements and tasks. Uh, if you have various types of incidents that you're logging, where maybe you have different forms, uh, we can have multiple incident types that can be logged. Yeah, as I well. mean, if we if we look at this one here, and we open it up, you can see that's that's very different. Oh yeah, that's that, different uh, than what we saw on the other one. So it looks like we had a, a different type of incident and form and information that we were using previously. And so uh, we can see here all of the information that was captured um, on this particular incident. So. All right, Banna, let's, uh, I'm gonna switch gears and jump over to the reports now. So a lot of reporting functionality that's available for incidents as well. If you come to the reports with that incident module enabled, you'll see a little header here under the reports for incidents. And these particular reports are similar to what we see uh, for our activity reports around improvements yes. and around projects. And so 
we're not going to go through in depth of, of how to be working with these reports, but just to do an overview of, of the various reports that are available for incidents. Starting off with the incident curve, this report is going to help you track your submission and completion rates to assess the growth of your improvement culture over time, um, specifically taking a look at those incidents, right? And so with this, Banna, I mean, we always coach on, on taking a look at uh, the slopes getting closer and closer together over time because yes. as more and more of those incidents are being reported, we want to make sure we're completing those out. Yeah. I mean, in terms of we'll talk we're cycle. doing a real bad job here <laughs> <laughs> in terms of we'll, we'll talk cycle time but but essentially you know we want to you know we're, we're seeing this this slope actually increase over time and so i would say we also maybe would if we saw that the slope was decreasing i wouldn't immediately say oh like incidents aren't being logged but maybe that is a sign that there's not quite as many incidents that are happening yeah. so that's another way that you can look at it well, you're going to hope that this one doesn't go up to the right all the time. We don't want these exactly. Lots and lots if, of if we were to see the slope continuing to to grow, that means that we are we're, we're not doing a great job of installing new processes to to help minimize those uh, incidents. Switching gears, let's go. What do I have next here? I think it's the user incident, incident activity. Incident activity. So popping open this report here. This is going to give you the details of your team's activity, and so specifically, you're going to be able to see those users who are contributing a lot in terms of uh, submitting those incidents, if they are working within those incidents and, and resolving, completing those incidents out in the system. Um, this is where you can see who is really actively engaged in that incident workflow and who could use uh, uh, some, just a heads up to be a little bit more engaged and make sure that they are uh, logging those incidents when they need to. It's gonna be a very similar report at a location level. So if we come over to the location incident activity, with this report, you're going to be able to drill down into any level of your organization. And so you can find the areas that are actively logging and working on the incidents and see those that could probably use more coaching as well. Next type of report we're going to take a look at here is the incident statuses. So this report's going to let you view the trends in the number of incidents and the status of those incidents over time. And so, Banna, we, we talked a little bit about that overdue status running to the red. Here we can see it looks like there's a whole bunch of incidents that are in that overdue status. We want to make sure we go in there and take the proper action uh, to get those out of that overdue status. And then I think the, the last two are all around the cycle time, right? So the first is going to be the location, location incident cycle time. This report allows Let's you to see- your guys' numbers aren't that high. Oh, no. <laughs> this, uh, this report allows you to view the trends, or excuse me, uh, this report allows you to see the average time it takes for incidents in a particular location to be completed. And also you can see how long they are remaining in each status. And so, yes, to your point, Banna, I mean, taking a look at the, the, the total average of days that it takes for an incident to go from new to complete, I mean, we would really want to see a much smaller number than what our current report is showing us here. It's a demo environment. Nobody ever completes incidents out in here. And then the same will go for our user incident cycle time. So this report allows you to see the average time it takes for a particular person's incidents to be completed. And again, how long they are um, remaining in each status here as well. So I don't know, Ben. I mean, Jeff here with 154 days, that actually probably seems pretty accurate. I mean, from an improvement standpoint, I, really, would, I would believe those numbers. I thought it was going to be worse, to be honest. So I just want to point out, I have my product hat on right now, Benna, but we are thinking about eventually combining these reports uh, with some of the other reports in the system. And so if you were to come to the activity, this would rather be the improvement curve, it would probably be an, an item curve. And so if you have the incidents module enabled, you will still be able to come into that report uh, and filter down specifically for those incidents so that you can still take advantage of the reports that we just took a look at. Yeah, and, and just to clarify, um, with that item curve right now, we have improvement, project, and incident. But if we combine them, um, you can get all the benefits of your curves here just by using the filter option, which didn't previously exist. And then so we're trying also, to simplify and- Yeah, and, it's all about unification in Kinex's standardization. You'll also be able to take a look at a task curve or a chart curve, which we've never had before. So that's pretty exciting. We know charts is a big workflow that more and more customers are taking advantage of. 
All right, Banna, let's see if we had any questions come through. Uh, looks like we are all set. Go ahead and take us away, man. Yeah, so if you have any questions right now, feel free to ask. Um, just to reiterate, this is an add-on module. Um, this isn't something that most of our customers currently use, but we're definitely hoping that more people will jump in and say, hey, um, improvements and incidents are definitely tied together, and I would love to be able to track my incidents and see what improvements come of those in, in one system. And this type of workflow is is very valuable and useful in healthcare as well as, as manufacturing. Yes. And so these can be used across the board. We probably took a look at more healthcare related examples today, but of course, you know, if there's a, an incident on the factory floor. Somebody you're gonna, drives a forklift into a. Yeah, I feel bad. For the, <laughs> I feel bad for the forklift if it tried to drive into me. Uh, but yes, that would that would be another type of organization that could get a lot out of the, the incidents module. So thanks so much for the time today, everyone. Um, we hope these webinars are valuable and, and appreciate your feedback. If you do have suggestions about what you would like to see in our webinars, um, definitely shoot us an email. Um, find us on LinkedIn or, or Twitter, um, and we're happy to, to plan and produce webinars based on the topics that, that you really want to hear about. Um, be sure to sign up for the next Banner Rippy Show toward the end of March, and to check out all of our webinars from this and last year, head over to kinexus.com slash webinars slash office hours. Um, you'll see the, the little link with our, our faces on it, too, and that'll, that'll guide you the right direction. Um, in the meantime, we definitely encourage you to check out our support page at support.kinexus.com. If you have questions about some of these incidents, um, you can search for incidents and you will find support pages on incidents there as well. Um, so if you want to enable these, um, reach out to your customer experience representative and, and we'll make sure we put you in the right place. Um, I'm Matt Banna and he's Ryan Rippey. Keep improving. And we'll see you kind next time.